Deep in the heart of the financial jungle, a select few have managed to not only survive, but thrive. They're the millionaires, the titans of industry, the individuals who've built empires from the ground up. But what separates them from the rest? What are the secret habits that fuel their relentless drive and propel them towards unimaginable success? Today, we embark on a thrilling expedition, venturing into the minds and routines of these modern-day alchemists, uncovering the golden nuggets of wisdom that unlock the millionaire mindset. By far the best investment you can make is in yourself. I mean, uh, for example, communication skills. I tell those students that come that uh, they're going to graduate schools and business and they, they're learning all these complicated formulas and all that. If they just learn to communicate better, in, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, 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 uh, if you can't communicate, somebody says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And, and you have to be able to get, get forth your ideas. And, uh, and that's, that's relatively easy. I did it myself with the Dale Carnegie course. Some people wish I'd taken a shorter course now <laughs> in terms of my talking later on. But it, it, it's just hugely important. And you, if you invest in yourself, nobody can take it away from you. The most influential people in my life were my grandparents. And uh, I have a, my mother had me when she was 17 years old. She raised me uh, with my grandparents' help. And she was still in high school when she had me. That was not cool in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1964 but she did an incredible job. But I was lucky because I had not just her, but I had, she, re, she married my father when I was about four years old. He has been a huge influence in my life. But my grandmother and grandfather were like second set of parents for me. And you learn different things from them because they're at a different stage of life and they know different things. They're calm about certain things. It was a huge gift to me. My grandfather, was a, uh, had a ranch in Texas, and I spent all my summers there from like age four to 16, and he was the most self-reliant person. He did all of his own veterinary work, all the things, I mean, and to observe him solve problems and figure out how to do things with no tools and no resources and, you know, very small amounts of money, it was a huge education from an early age. So we were very lucky. See, one of the things that you, I know people who have, uh, they don't have great family situations and sometimes they break that cycle and they are the ones who pull out of it. Those people are the ones I reserve my highest admiration for. In the beginning, nobody wanted a Tesla. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 when we made the original sort of roadster sports car, uh, people were like, well, why would I want an electric car? That's, my gasoline car works fine. Uh, I'm like, no, electric car is better, I should try it. Um, and it was hard, you know, hard to get people to do a test drive. First of all, nobody knew who we were, they never heard of this company. And I'm like, yeah, we're named after Nikola Tesla. You know that guy? Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, for sure we were doing push in the beginning because people said, there was no one telling us that they wanted an electric car. So it was not, it was not out of like, you know, it was like lots of people coming up to me saying, hey, I really want an electric car. I, did, I heard that zero times. Um, <laughs> so people were like, it's like, man, we're gonna make an electric car and show that these things can be good. Um, and then people want them. Um, you know, it's like, I think it was like Henry Ford said, that they're like the, you know, if you, we talk about the Model T. It's like if you ask the public what they wanted, they'd say a, a faster horse. Mm. And so if you, if you did like a big survey and said, "Hey, public, before automobiles, what would you like?" It's like, "Well, I'd like my horse to go three miles an hour faster and eat less food, and uh, you know, be stronger and live longer, and that kind of thing." Um, that will be basically a, a bunch of incremental improvements on horse. Um, 
because people aren't, when you say like, well, what about an automobile, like car that drives itself, like, what are you talking about? That's, that's not, that sounds crazy. Um, but when you actually make an, an automobile and give it to people and say, okay, now this is a horse where you can keep it in the barn and if you leave for a month, it's still alive. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so carry more, more weight than a horse and go further and that kind of thing. So, you know, the, it's like w w when, when it's a radically new product, people don't know that they want it because it's just not in their, in their, in their scope. I think when they first started making TVs, they did a nationwide survey. I think this might have been like 46 or 48. It's like a famous nationwide survey. Will you ever buy a TV? And I was like 96% of respondents said no. Hmm. Some, some crazy number. Like basically everyone's like, would you buy a TV? And maybe they put a price in there or something. I don't know. But it was famously, almost everyone said they would not buy a TV. But they didn't know what they're talking about. So. so the big game changing stuff at the beginning is a company push kind of a thing most of the time. But yeah. then changes to the product over time can be a lot more customer pull kind of a focus. Yeah, ch changes to the product over time can be uh, incremental changes. Um, then, then, then customers can certainly tell you, it's good to get customer feedback to say, how can we improve the product? Um, and once they're using it, they can say, okay, I like this thing about it, I don't like this other thing, and then we can improve the product over time. Customer okay. feedback after they, they have the fundamental thing is, is great. Let's pause for a while and all ears here, business minds. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? I have something special to unveil an exclusive online course that promises to empower you in the world of investments. Cash Flow Academia This course is designed for everyone, from beginners dipping their toes into the investment waters to seasoned pros seeking advanced strategies. Don't miss this opportunity to take charge of your financial future. Click the links below and enroll now. Great first day I went to school, I was in a classroom. By the time I was, uh, you know, six years old, didn't go to school until I was six years old because I lived with my grandmother at that time. Sure. But she had taught me how to read, read the Bible, Bible stories. So I went into the classroom knowing Nicodemus, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I could spell all of those words. I thought I was, you know, I was preaching to the, to my kindergarten teacher. You're a dull huh? <laughs> So she was like, who is this girl? <laughs> So I was never placed in an environment where I was ever made to feel inferior. I always felt like I'm the smartest kid in this room. And because I was never placed in a, in a, never put in a position where I was made to feel less than, sure. I didn't grow up feeling less than, you right. know? And the rest, as they say, is history. And because the rest, they say, is history. The... And it's all about what you believe. You know, I say this to, uh, when I, I do something on my network now called Life Class, the fundamental key to success is what you believe is true for yourself. Not what you want, not what you desire. It's what do you believe? You know, you can say, I want to, I want to be the most successful person in the world. Yeah. But if you believe that there's a glass ceiling and you're going to have a hard time kicking through that glass ceiling, keep you will down. be defined by the glass ceiling. And um, the great beauty and gift of my life is that I was never defined by the box that other people tried to put me in. The hardest thing for me early on was, you know, because I, I just started off as, I, I, was, I was an engineer, or, you know, I wasn't even really an engineer as a student, right? It's, I, I thought I was going to be an engineer when I graduated. And, you know, when you're, when you're building something yourself, you, you kind of have all the meetings in your head, right? It's like you don't need to articulate the principles so clearly. It's like you kind of can make all the trade-offs on, on everything from architecture to product to marketing to, you know, just all these things. And you're, you're kind of just, you have the context to trade this off. And I think it's really easy when you, when you start building something to, um, to underestimate how much context you need to put out there and how clear you need to be about what you're trying to do. So, you know, most of my mistakes early on in building the company 
were about not being clear enough internally about what we were trying to do. I and mean, there's this very famous you know, episode where, where like in 2006, a couple years into building the company, um, Yahoo tried to buy us. And so they, they offered a ton of money and a lot of the people who, who I'd hired at the point, they were kind of experienced technology executives and this was like all of their startup dream come true, right? They, they joined and then you know, within you know, a year or a few months, like the, the, the company had the opportunity to exit for this large amount of money. And you know, I really failed through that period to communicate what we were trying to do and what we, what we stood for. And in the absence of that, that context, then of course it was a rational thing for people to think that this was like a good outcome for us to there have. You have it. Remember, becoming a millionaire is not just about chasing money, it's about cultivating a mindset and habits that empower you to achieve your full potential. By incorporating these strategies into your life, you too can unlock the millionaire mindset and pave your own path to success. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more video updates.